Gene, you're down 0-2, winning run on third base. What were you trying to do in that at-bat? Just trying to put in play, you know, not, not striking out, uh, especially with bases loaded, no how. Uh, I just do my best with compete, and I think that the base went through. How much did it mean to you personally to come up big for your team in this situation? I mean, it's, it's a team effort, you know, a team uh, in the inning, you can definitely see how how it's a build up. Uh, so let's start the inning with the base hit, arrive with a hit by pitch, and then Abby hit by pitch. He just really uh, pass the tone, play a great you know baseball game, and uh, you definitely see how 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 we win again. And how much better are you seeing the baseball as of late? I mean, I'm not comparing. You know, I just I just go out there and compete, work hard every day. It doesn't matter, you know. Uh, how's going to me? It's just all about the team. It's all about. Uh, the Gatorade bath for the big walk-off win before we let you go. How much fun are you having with this group? I mean, it's a, it's a fun group, you know, it's a fun group. Uh, I think we play really good baseball on the stretch. Uh, yeah, just keep on set about it. Just keep going, um, keep working hard. And, uh, you know, as a competitor, there's nothing I can do about it. Just go there and compete every single day. Congratulations, G-Thing, for the time! All right, sorry. <laughs> Skip, just really a great game all around between great at-bats, great pitching. How would you describe this one? Yeah, just beat a tough team uh, with a really good pitcher on the mound who was on. And uh, when Stroh's on, it's it's tough to square up a baseball. So Zeus had to, you know, go pitch to pitch with him and, and match him, and he did. And uh, over 70% first pitch strikes um, just on the attack. And, uh, you know, like we've talked about it, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but he's, he's – uh, he attacks the zone. He's really, really good, and I thought his off-speed uh, really played. Uh, Changeup was great. Slider was really good. So, um, just a lot of positives on the pitching side today. And Gene Segura, he tied it up, won the game. A guy who's been coming around just won. How happy are you already to see a guy like that finally start to come around? What have you seen from him as a player? Yeah, he's one of the leaders in the clubhouse, and he's the guy that tries to get everybody going, no matter how frustrated he is. The guy loves to play baseball, so it you know when you see him out there frustrated, it you know it hurts you because you know how much it means to him and how passionate he is when he plays the game. And uh, the guy wants to play every single day, and um, you know he's going to come out on top of this thing. It's just a um, slow start, but he start he's starting to hit the ball really well, and it's good to see one of those sneak through finally. Because if anybody deserves one of those, you know, four hoppers sneak through the infield, it's definitely Gene. Uh, back to back days, ninth inning rallies, just the team, regardless of the situation, finding ways to do what they can, regardless of what the Yeah, is. against a really good bullpen, too. And Atlanta was a really good bullpen. So Chicago has a really good bullpen, a lot of good arms, different ways they can beat you. And, um, you know, I thought Flo, you know, third day in a row, I hate doing that, but he's been so efficient uh, through 12 pitches yesterday, less than 10 today. Um, it's just, you know, shows you what kind of guy he is, um, you know, going three days in a row, which, you know, I, I hate doing. So uh, bullpen was great. Um, you know, Braz got the ground ball he needed, just, you know, kind of got through there. But, um, yeah, I think the guys did did exactly what they needed to do to win the game, and um, it, was a, it was a nice win. I was going to ask about Flora, but you already beat me to it. So uh, you mentioned that a lot of hard hit balls, though, early on against um, Stroman. Just, I guess they weren't finding holes with a lot of line outs. Yeah, we're taking good at bats. Um, you know, Jazz had a great game, really squared up a lot of balls. I think he's tied for the major league lead now, maybe in stolen bases. And he's running at the right time, which I think he's becoming a really good base dealer. Sometimes he can just outrun the ball because he's just kind of a freak athlete. But he's actually like game planning the pitcher, and John Jay's helping out a lot um, with that. And um, some big stolen bases at the time. We are running on contact there. That is the right play by Jazz. Obviously, we didn't want that. <laughs> him to get doubled off but that because you're going on contact he is going to that's the risk you take and so that was the right move with jazz um cooper hit it as good as you can get um you know that's it that you rarely see a ball hit that hard caught in the infield double play ball um good at bat just you know bad luck it ended up becoming a move point because puck got the strike up but what was the explanation with the pitch clock violation yeah we just had a disagreement <laughs> uh, just keep me safe hustling and that playing hard, the running game, 
it's part of the identity of this team. I mean, in the, in the seventh, when Abby hits the ball to their way, Arias getting to third and that also in play. Um, what does that tell you about this team so far? Our first meeting in spring training was about base running, and I think uh, you know it shows you what kind of teammate you are by how hard you run the bases because there's a care factor, and you can you can't control what you just did on at the plate. Sometimes you ground outs, and you know the guy makes an error, and you know you're upset about it, or you strike out, drop third strike, or maybe fielder's choice, whatever. You're not happy about it, but then you have to realize that now you're a base runner and you have to run the bases in uh, the right way. And so we we preach that from day one. Credit to those guys in the clubhouse; they're, they're passionate about. It. Um, but yeah, I think we took a lot of heat early on that we weren't stealing enough bases, and um, I think we showed that you know just re be patient. You know, we we know what we're doing as far as like game planning and running at the right times, not just run to run because of the new rules. Um, and those guys have been really smart about it. And uh, you know, besides maybe a couple of the you know steal early, break early against the Twins, I think it was. We've been really good at at stealing at the right time and and running the bases the right way. So um, still work to do, but they've been doing a really good job. Kind of to pick it up from what Danny said, um, a word that maybe has been used already is resilient. Um, you know, you guys down in the ninth yesterday, come back, down again, walk off. Would you describe maybe the identity of this team as well as a resilient team? Yeah, I mean, you have some. You have a lot of winners in that clubhouse. The guys that have won awards, but have won playoff games, won World Series. Uh, they, they know what winning looks like in there, and and trying to breed that culture that you you play nine innings and you're never out of it. And I, you know, I've said it a couple times now, like yesterday and earlier today, that as long as we're in kind of slam range. I know I keep saying that, but maybe the last day I'll say it. But uh, we feel really good about being in that area because of the hitters we have on our team. There's value of putting the ball in play. Uh, you know, we've discussed the, the strikeout rates, you know, kind of going up a little bit. And, um, you know, we talked earlier today about, you know, value of putting the ball in play, put the ball in play. And um, when you do that, our ball uh, batting average in play is actually pretty good. So we do that uh, like we did in the ninth inning, you know, a couple hit batter, put the ball in play, and all of a sudden you win a game. And um, so, yeah, I think re resilient, yeah, sure. If, um, but I think it's also like the work that's being put in and trusting the process and not, um, and not just like living and dying per at bat. It's just you should trust the process. Did you play against Segura? I did. And then what was, mm -hmm. I guess, what was your takeaway when, you know, you were playing against him? I didn't know where to play him at second because he just hit it everywhere. And uh, um, you knew he was going to be a bad ball hitter, good ball hitter. Um, with some pop, I mean, you can't just lay it in there. So he's just a, it's a, he's a baseball player. He can play any position. And after him getting the playoffs last year, um, he knows that like what it takes to win, and just wants to do anything he can to get back there. And that's why I think he's been frustrated about the start that he's had. Um, but it's just, um, you know, that's why he's he's in there because, like I said, he's he's a leader, and you still know that he's going to do something good at the plate. I don't care if he's over his last 20. I feel good whenever he's at the plate because something's going to happen. How important is for you um, having a guy like AJ Pop, who is like he has a lot of confidence, is he's winning games, and he's not just saving the games. Yeah, I, I mean, the guys that are in the seventh, eighth, ninth inning are your your leverage guys. Luckily, those guys in the back end, we've had five of those guys, I think, out there with Braz and Scott and Floro and, and JT when he was uh, when he was here, you know, not injured, and obviously Puck has been. Um, you know, I wouldn't say the biggest surprise because you knew what we got when we traded for him. It was a big arm, but it hasn't really pitched in the ninth inning much. Um, but, you know, what he showed in spring training, um, you know, I, 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 with him and Flo back there, we just felt like those two guys were the guys that we wanted to end the game with. Um, and now that he's done it a couple times, you can probably ask him, but I, he probably feels pretty good when he comes out there and, and feels like he's going to you know, get three outs and, and win or save the game for us. Six and a third tonight. What's the key to your efficiency? Uh, I feel like the first inning kind of set the tone. They were kind of swinging early and uh, just attacking the zone again. I feel like the last two to maybe three, the back half of that Phillies one, uh, just started getting behind on guys and not attacking. So I feel like finding the first pitch strike again was my biggest key. And that you did, I think, almost like seventy percent of the time. So that focus, how do you go about balancing that first pitch strike against guys who are aggressive early? Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, something that Mel talks about a lot is just finding like the the spots in the zone that where we can go. And um, I feel like every hitter has a hole. 
um, no matter how good you are, I feel like you can uh, find a certain spot that you can go to. And um, especially, you know, they're going to look for their pitch in the first, if they're going to swing on the first one. So um, it's just don't throw where they're looking, I guess. How important was it for you to have now in like this, especially not thinking through five the last two? Yeah, I mean, it was huge. Just a, like a bounce back uh, confidence thing. Um, yeah, I didn't obviously didn't want it to get, you know, worse and worse. Um, but just big, I think, for me, um, just to keep us in the ball game and give us a chance, especially with Stroman, you know, doing a good job and throwing over there. So, um, you yeah, know, I'm glad that we got the win there. Probably face a girl with the Phillies. Just was it like when you had to face him, and then now having him as a teammate, you describe the two different. I mean, it's way better having him as a teammate than it was when I had to face him. He was just. Uh, He's kind of like a rise. I feel like, you know, he's just like a pesk when he's hitting. And um, so it's great to have a guy like that on your team. And uh, it's it sucks when you have to face him. So I'm sure he made it tough on them, and clearly he did. What was it like just seeing that not getting unfold? Yeah, I mean, watching that and you seeing how I feel like there's never any fight uh, or never any um, – quit in our guys. I feel like you've seen that throughout the year. Um, maybe in the, the years past, you see a little more, uh, you know, we're down, we kind of give up. But um, this year, you see kind of a difference in, in the mentality that no matter if we're down in the late innings, you know, we're going to come back and, and bounce back. So it was good to see that out of our guys. And obviously, the ninth inning was was awesome to, to watch. Yeah, perfect to the teal. So we hope to keep that going. Sí, no, para mí es algo que es muy importante regresar a ese, a ese nivel eh, donde yo quiero estar y, y, y darnos un chance de ganar eh, en cada salida, así que estaba muy contento con, con la actuación de hoy. Este equipo viene atrás en Atlanta, viene atrás hoy o sea, va arriba a diferencia del año pasado ¿qué tú notas en este equipo? que el año pasado los juegos cerrados los perdían yo creo que tenemos bastante confianza en el bullpen, tenemos bastante confianza en, en eh, los bateadores también, ya no importa si estamos perdiendo por dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, no importa en el séptimo, octavo, yo, yo creo que todo el mundo en el dogado tiene esa confianza y tiene la esperanza que vamos a notar y salir arriba. Es uno de los primeros tres innings que hicieron contacto con, con fuerza, después lograste hacer el ajuste en ese inning con el doble play y después terminaste con un muy ganador. Cuéntanos un poco en qué te enfocaste en esa segunda parte de la recuperación. Yo creo que empezamos a usar el cambio más y eso me ayudó bastante. El cambio es un picheo muy, muy importante para mí. Eh, obviamente, yo creo que los bateadores tienen que, que buscar la recta eh, cuando la estoy localizando bien. Y hoy, como la estaba usando, eh, se me salieron a buscar la recta y con el cambio hice el ajuste. Jesús, tu papá siempre te acompaña en, en el estadio. Hey, quiero nada más saber qué significa saber, o sea, lanzar en frente de ellos, porque me imagino que lo hiciste cuando eras pequeño y ahora estar en las grandes ligas y lanzar en frente de ellos en cada una de tus aperturas. ¿Qué significado tiene eso para ti en, aquí en las grandes ligas? Eh, bueno, para mí es algo muy importante y también yo creo que eh, es algo que uno no pone mucho pensamiento en eso hasta que después del juego y voy a mi casa y me, y me pongo a pensar que cuando estaba en Oakland ellos casi nunca me podían ver eh, porque estaba tan lejos o siempre tenían que trabajo, pero aquí, eh, estando aquí en casa... Vienen a todos los juegos, hasta en la ruta tratan de ir todos los juegos. Y para mí es, es algo que yo sé que ellos sienten muy, mucho orgullo y también eh, ese amor que, que siempre está ahí. No importa si, si me van bien, me va mal, siempre me ven todos los días y después de cada juego. Así que yo estoy muy feliz y contento que ellos estén ahí siempre.